Joining me now in a Power Lunch exclusive is Royal Caribbean CEO Richard Fain. And Richard, we know it's a challenging time. Really appreciate you spending time with us today. Thank you, Zima. Good to be back. Let's talk about this summer. You're hoping to resume sailings uh, coming August 1st. Is that realistic at a time when there's no COVID-19 vaccine on the market and medical experts like Dr. Fauci say a, the risk of a second wave is high? Well, I think we, we have said that we're not sure when we're coming back. We won't come back until we're absolutely sure that we've done everything we can to work to, uh, to protect the safety of our guests and crew. Uh, we said when we, we won't be back before the end of July, um, but we, we haven't gone to the next step of saying we're absolutely confident that we're starting on August 1. We will work with the authorities. We will work with all the experts that we have asked to help us on this to make sure that we are doing everything we can to um, protect our guests and crew. Yeah, it's tough to envision passengers getting on board when, Richard, there are still thousands of crew members stuck at sea, isolated. Tell us why it's taken so much time to get these crew members home. Well, you know, we have, we have wonderful crew members who really devote their, their lives to, do, to helping our guests. Um, and they come from 100 countries around the world. And in, in this situation, every country seems to have its own travel restrictions, its own border restrictions, um, even for its own citizens. And so it's very difficult to coordinate having all these people go through it. But I, we've already managed to get a large percentage home. Um, we've taken the extra step of coordinating to bring a lot of crew members from all over the fleet to assemble them on individual ships. And then we're using those ships to transport them home. It's frankly, it's a difficult thing to do. It's very complicated. It's also very expensive. But these people really want to get home Richard, to their families. On yeah. that point, can you make a pledge that by the end of next week, all of your members, all of your crew gets to gets to be home? <laughs> um, no, I absolutely not. In fact, we know we won't be able to make that schedule because there are some countries that are limiting and not allowing their crew members, uh, their citizens back under any circumstances. But we do think that um, we're making quite strong steps. We've got 10,000 that we're coordinating to go home on our ships. And we think that the rest will be coming home over the next couple of weeks. At the same over time- next, I should say a few weeks. Okay, let's also talk about the future of cruising, uh, Richard. Mm -hmm. Anticipation is building to understand in this new world of social distancing and this new world of masks, what the experience will be like on board. What can you, uh, what can you kind of paint for us right now? Well, I think we're all learning. I think that's one of the important things and it's important that we do understand all the implications. Uh, we have consulted with some of the leading experts in the world and we'll be talking more about that before we come back to make sure that we have the best protocols, the best sanitation, the best hygiene, the best testing, et cetera, to allow us to come back in a way that we are confident is doing all the things that we should be to protect those people. You know, uh, I used a metaphor before of comparing ourselves to taking an airline flight after 9-11. After 9-11, a lot of people said, nobody's going to fly again. Um, and if they do, it's going to be such an unpleasant circumstance, nobody will do it. And the truth is, flying today is not like it was pre-9-11, but it is very much part of what we do. And the cruise lines over time have shown their ability to adjust to a new world. The cruising last yeah. year wasn't anything like cruising was five years ago. And I think cruising next year will be different than it was this year. You know, you have some of the biggest ships in the industry. I've been on your Oasis of the Seas uh, as 6,000 people. In this new world, how much do you need to reduce occupancy to allow for social distancing on board? At the same time, uh, turning a profit and making sure you can cover the cost of, of operating a, a big ship. Well, my guess is, and of course we don't know this because we have to work with the authorities and our experts and, and learn as, as society opens up, society is also finding things out. And my guess is that when we start, we will limit uh, the number of people who can go on to a ship, just as my neighborhood restaurants are beginning to open up. But by and they how will much? Start... Is it 60%, yeah. 50%? Yes, I wish I knew. 
That's the kind of question that we're asking ourselves right now. And by the way, we'll learn from the experience in our society. We'll learn from the restaurants. We'll learn from the barbershops. I know I need one. And um, we'll learn and we will adjust much as they're doing. So we'll start at one point and then gradually, as knowledge of the disease, as the testing, as the, as the contact tracing, as vaccines come on board, that will gradually adjust. The other thing I have to say, and Seema, as you say, you've been on our Oasis class ships. They're very large ships, but actually that makes social distancing easier because we can spread people out. There's actually more room per person, so that actually makes it easier. So it's not the size of the ship. It's the way you manage your product. Richard, I have so many questions uh, pertaining to getting those crew members home, but and what's going to happen to the buffets if there are buffet foods? But I want to say something that is very not journalistic to say, and that is this. I have real empathy for you. Uh, I, I feel sorry because you had a business that was thriving, and this puts you right in the center of it. Uh, I want to get well, an answer to know, a quick question, then, I, if I might, a couple more. Do you, do you ever have a moment where you go, why me? <laughs> uh, no. Um, what I do have a moment is, and I say, why our society? This is a terrible thing. Yes, um, we had a, an amazing business model, and we will again. But look around. Everybody is suffering. Um, and by the way, you mentioned the crew members. These people are far from home, far from their loved ones. I'm isolating at home. I think a lot of, a lot of my friends and, and business colleagues are. But we're with our families. We are relatively free. Um, a lot of people, um, our crew who can't be with their family, people who have lost their jobs. So, um, right. uh, you know, it is, look, I was very proud of the business that we built, but I was proud of the people that did it. And those people are still there, and they're going to yeah. make it fantastic not in not too long. So don't feel sorry for us. Let me go back. Let me go but, back but to a couple of questions a that are much more CNBC. Yeah, let me go. Let me go back to a couple of questions that are much more CNBC-ish. If you sure. had to say right now, what percentage of capacity do you need to be able to make money? That's number one. And number two, we're hearing that there are new bookings for 2021. How many of those new bookings are really fresh bookings? And how many of those are ones that are FCC or forward, forward cruise credits, people who have postponed into next year? Sure. Um, so the, the answer to the first question is, as it relates to what percent we need, it depends on the ship. Um, frankly, the newer, larger ships are very much more efficient with a lower fixed cost, so we, we have a much lower bro, uh, break-even point, and that helps us. Uh, with respect to forward bookings, the vast bulk of them are new bookings, not FCCs. It's a relatively small amount of those that are uh, future cruise certificates. Richard, as we look to the path forward, uh, help us understand the status of, of your conversation with ports and to ensure that in the future, if there is an infected passenger on board, you can medically evacuate that passenger to land as soon as possible. And uh, unlike in the past where the ports were denying entry, you can get that level of access as soon as possible. Because when I speak to passengers, uh, that's their biggest concern, getting on a ship and then being stranded for days on end. A very important point and one that we're focused on um, uh, with our own experts and with our outside experts. Um, and it's something that really requires thought ahead of time. So we have, unfortunately, we're all so much more knowledgeable about uh, COVID-19 and the consequences than we were a few weeks ago, never mind a couple of months ago. Uh, and we didn't have in place protocols and programs for if this happens, this is what we do. And we need that in the today's circumstance. So I, I have mentioned, and we've been public about this, there are the four aspects of how do we have our safe and healthy return to service. And the first is screening before they get on. The second is dealing with them when they're on the ship. The third is the destinations. But the fourth is the one you talk about. How do we make sure that we have an established protocol made in conjunction with the ports so that we're all set and when and if such a thing happens, 
we are ready to go. That is a big focus of the work that we've been doing and that we will be doing, and we have to have an established process in place. And I'm really pleased with the work that our teams have done to focus on that, to be realistic about it. And so uh, if and when that happens in the future, we will have a program that takes that into account. Because you're right, um, that is an issue that people are concerned about, yeah. and rightly so. Uh, absolutely. And, and Richard, we know it's a, it's a challenging task, but as you detail that crisis playbook, we, we hope you'll share it with us first on CNBC as you do, Richard. Uh, thank you for joining us today. We appreciate it. Seema, thank you for having me and uh, stay safe. Richard Fain, CEO of Royal Caribbean.